I'm Darren and this is Auto Atlantica. I am in the parts yard at Boffo Motors in New Brighton, Pennsylvania and uh, this is a treat because uh, Jim has very kindly let me have a wander around his parts yard because there are some exceedingly rare machines that are out here. But let's start with this lovely uh, Jaguar XJ6 Series 3. This is a US spec car, obviously. Um, it's, it's one of its customers' cars, but um, this is a beautiful color. Uh, these um, these alloys, I think they're called these Kent alloys, which, um, you know, synonymous with the XJ6. This is a Series 3, of course, like mine. And the Series 3, of course, had the, the rubber bumpers on and... Uh, they also had the revised roof line, which was actually designed by Pininfarina. In, mechanically, a lot of it was carried over from the Series 2, but the Series 3 was a bit more reliable when Sir John Egan uh, took over Jaguar, and then especially once he made it an independent company. You're not going to see many 8016s in the US these days. ADO was the acronym of BMCs and later BLs uh, cars. It stood for Austin uh, Drawing Office, not Amalgamated Drawing Office. The Amalgamated was used by a lot of people, which basically reflected the amalgamation of Austin and Morris. But it's an Austin Drawing Office 16, Model 16, which became the Austin 11 and 1300, the Austin America in this country. But in the US, the Mark 1s, which ran from like 62 to 66, were sold as MGs in two and four doors. Um, then it it halted in the States, and then in 68 came back, as the, which was a Mark 2, as the Austin America. And they were all Austin Americas were two doors only. And it ran until about 72, which was basically the final year in America, but the first sort of full model year for the Mark III. Uh, which we just had certain improvements over the Mark II. Now, you can tell the Mark III's in the States, not with this one because there's no front end to it, but um, the Mark III in the States for 71 and 72 had um, the, the black grille from the GT, the, uh, uh, the 1300 GT. Uh, it also had the white parking lights from the, Euro from the European models as opposed to orange. It had the larger... Marking lights for the marker lights for the US, these are very similar to what went on a lot of uh, BL cars, whereas previously they were smaller and uh, in the uh, in the trim. And then round the back, um, there used to be a wholly red rear light, and then for the last couple of years, they went to the amber turn signals, very much like. Uh, what you would see in Europe. Also, the position of the lights for the rear license plate were changed as well. But look at this. This is from a marina. That is a Morris Marina or Austin Marina rear light cluster. How often do you see that? Incredible. I don't know what this is from. That's, from, that's another one from a marina. Amazing. Anyway, so let's have a, a look around see what we've got very early mgb shell there we've got a lovely this must be a customer car this is a uh, jaguar e-type series three there's a whole raft of mgb body shells there triumph uh, early triumph spitfire body shell there the others are mgbs and there's an mg midget at the back beautiful jaguar xjs convertible uh, V12, that's going to be one of the last of the first of the HE cars. That is gorgeous. Um, this is a Jaguar uh, XJ6 Series 2. It is a 6. Yeah, and it's the L, which was the long wheelbase version. Again, US spec, the bigger bumper and slightly different lights, even though they look all orange. It's a strange combination. These are red. Uh, brake lights under there. Um, there's a, an XJ6 Series 3. There's a, a, a an X-Type based on the Mondeo. There's a, this is a Mark 1 uh, XJ6 with the holy red 
uh, rear lights. Let's look at that. It's pretty much stripped inside, but a lot of the dashboards there, the gauges, see if you can check out those gauges, are my favorite Jaguar gauges. They were basically taken from the Mark II. They were just wonderful gauges. This is an extraordinarily rare US specification Fiat 128 wagon estate. It's extremely rare. Now these door handles coming on the 128 and the 127 back in those days. But just look at that. Extraordinary. I live, I live for finds like this. Let's see what else we've got. There's a lot of Jaguars here. I think these are all sedans. I don't see a, a coupe, but this is a very rare for the US MGB GT. You see from the badge uh, up here. Now the MGB GT, which was the coupe one, um, this is a pre rubber bumper car so this will be probably 72 or 73 they weren't sold for very long in the in the us and the rubber bumper ones which came out of 74 were only sold in the us for that year so they are extremely rare here's a mini very early mini there's the glass that looks um in the same state as many minis actually underneath this is a fear 850 spider again <laughs> same condition you'd find many fear 850 spiders in and there's another one next to it is a an xj40 these rear lights alone are a pretty penny so the um, XJ40, of course, began development in 1972. I have one and uh, it was delayed and delayed and delayed. And the AJ6 engine was specifically designed for this. And that first appeared in the XJS in the early 80s, but um, it was designed for this car. This car didn't appear until, even though the design was finalized pretty much in 1980, it didn't come out until 1986. Just um, very indicative as to what was going on in the British car industry at the time. There's another one here. Now, this is what I want to show you. Two marinas. They, they were badged as Austins in North America and in South Africa, as opposed to Morris's elsewhere. And these, of course, launched in 1971. And they were only sold in the States until 1974. Uh, the US versions only had the B series 1.8, the same engine that was in the MGB. The A series 1.3 was not sold here. Uh, it might have been a better choice because it was just uh, a better engine all round, and that was the that was the engine that was in the uh, Ado 16, the Austin America. But um, over here, the Marina was stuck with a very unreliable B series engine, and. Uh, Although it, it did not sell well, it was plagued with reliability problems in the States. Carried on in Canada, though, until 1978. So the Series 2 cars from 1976 with the revised dashboard uh, were sold uh, in Canada. But it was only when the Marina uh, entered its Mark III phase with the new O-Series engines, including the 1.7, that those engines didn't meet uh, American or Canadian emission standards and that's when the car disappeared from American North American shores. Here's another one. Uh, this is the uh, sedan. Let's see if we can take a look inside this. Oh yeah, you can see that's the uh, the very early dashboard. The Mark II's had the dashboard that actually swooped around in the middle away from the driver, <laughs> remarkably. Okay. Um, Again, I haven't seen this many Fiat Stradas together. There's a number of them here since I was a kid. 
Now, the Strada, of course, was developed in the 1970s. It debuted in 1978 to replace the 128, and it did replace the 128 in the States, but not in Europe. The 128 carried on into the 80s, but it used the engines from the 128, the 1.1, the 1.3, and the 1.5. The US just had the 1.5, as you might imagine, that was also in the X19. But You know, U.S. legislation demanded these big five mile an hour impact bumpers, which kind of ruins the look. Um, But uh, if you can take a look in there, that's how I remember the Strada. Quite something. This is a five door one. There was also a three door. There's a few three doors here as well. And then uh, two years after they debuted they added some diesels and then in 81 there was two twin cams but the the diesels and the twin cans were never sold in the states there's another strata here on the european cars this told you what the trim was and there was a side repeater here it just says strata on these cars this is a three door and there's a couple of earlier uh, austin americas 8016s here and uh, these have got the earlier uh, these are like post 1967 ones lights they were a bit um a bit smoother than the mark one oh my goodness another marina look at that now this has got the grill that was from the tc in the uk um, and it just says 1.8 on there which was the b series engine this is super rare i would love this thing but it's pretty shot this is fit 131 mirror fiori as we would call it but it was called the brava in the states and this is the desirable two-door version but uh yeah, don't come in time just get in there and uh have a have a look at that amazing car it's just such a shame to see all this perforating i don't know where you get another door from this is a pretty bent up Fiat 128 saloon sedan, two door version. Um, it's difficult to tell what year this is because in the US, this is a pre 70, pre 77 car. Because in the US, they did not get the revised front end that the European ones did in 77. They continued with the, the same round headlight treatment because of headlight laws. Couple of a couple more Stradas here, a five door and a three door. I mean, I find this quite emotional um, uh, to see these cars because I've never seen Stradas in the States before until I came here, and there's half a dozen of them. Um, I loved the Strada as a kid. You may remember the Barbara of Seville. Um, commercial that was on tv it was one of the longest running commercials ever and here we got an incredibly rare car now jim said that they did not they were not a purveyor of lancia but they did work on them this is a beta hpe the beta was the first car that was developed after lancia was bought by fiat in 1969 and it debuted in 1972-3 and it was on two different platforms. The sedan had the longer platform than the coupe. The coupe was on a shorter platform. The coupe, they built the Spider. It was built by Zagato, actually, on that coupe flat platform, while the sedan platform was used for this, this sort of shooting brake. And the HPE stood for High Performance Estate. So it came with the top spec engine, which I think was a two litre. I'll have to check on that. But what they did, they took the longer platform and then stretched the roof and then gave it this um, the, the, this real elongated boot, uh, sort of hatchback lid uh, on the back. Extraordinarily rare in North America, in any condition, including this condition. Um, it's very sad to see. I mean, it is going into holes. I mean, that is pretty shot. But, yeah, 
absolutely extraordinary. This looks like the driver's door for it. But what a what a thing this would be restored. But I, th I sadly think that that is not going to happen, not with this one. And then up here, we've got another Austin America um, 8016. This looks like an early car, actually. This has got the, the earlier um, number plate bulbs, which were like two little bobbles. On the on the bumper, Pininfarina actually designed this car. It is a very very pretty car, and um, but Alec Izigonis and Alex Moulton, who built um, bikes with very interesting suspensions, actually worked on the suspension of this car, and they actually took the idea from the Citroen 2CV. It was an interconnected suspension system, which used little cylinders filled with they called it hydroelastic. And it was filled with fluid and it, that, that fluid would be pushed between the four in, in, in it through pipes under pressure and the beauty was of course it just didn't rust so it was very long lasting and it gave it a very smooth ride a couple more stradas here five door one and a three door one uh, over here and then i think this is an x19 so the Strada, the X19 was the development code for this car. The Strada's was actually X138, but the X19 was the only one that where the code name went into the name of the production car. This is a pre-77. After 19, from 1978, the global market used the larger US bumpers, but this is a pre-77 car. I can remember driving one of these as a teenager and absolutely loved it. Just take a look inside there. But again, these were pretty renowned for rust. So that's it from Boffo Motors in New Brighton, Pennsylvania. I really hope you've enjoyed, as much as I have, peering around some of these quite incredible gems that are just slowly degrading um now as they weather it's sad to see it brings a tear to the eye but they are being repurposed i hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have and thank you very much for watching i'm darren and this is auto atlantica